Hello, hello, yajro everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make bang kya. And bang kya is a Hmong style bean thread noodle dish that we like to make for special occasions, for potlucks, for just in general. Uh, you'll typically find this dish within the Hmong culture being made for funerals, for weddings, for parties. Uh, lots of things. So today I'm going to be showing you guys our version of it, how we like to make it, what vegetables and sauces and protein we like to add into the noodle dish and how I cook it. So I hope you guys can give this recipe a try. It is super simple but also very delicious. So let's just go ahead and start cooking. Let's go. The first thing I want to do is soak the noodles and the noodles I'm using today are these bean thread noodles here that come in a pink netted bag and you can typically find this at your local Asian grocery market. I'm going to use a whole bag here plus another half bag so roughly around a pound of dried bean thread noodles. Place it in a bowl. Another bag. Go ahead and cover this with some hot tap water. Pour enough water to cover the noodles completely. Okay, so go ahead and let this soak for at least 30 minutes to an hour until it's nice and flexible. In the meantime, let's go ahead and prep our herbs, our meat, and our sauce. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is what kind of sauces I'll be using. In a bowl here, I'm gonna add in some Golden Mountain seasoning sauce. I have some soy sauce here. Oyster sauce. This is sweet dark soy sauce. Some fish sauce. A little bit of sugar. Some black pepper, quite a lot because we like lots of black pepper in this dish. A little bit of salt. And mushroom seasoning, which is totally optional. And that's it, go ahead and just mix this up. So that's it for the sauce. Go ahead and just set this aside. All right, so it's been about an hour of soaking this and you guys can tell it's a lot more flexible to work with and hydrated. So to cook the bean thread noodles, we're not gonna stir fry it. We're gonna add in some hot boiling water. So hot boiling water for about one minute or so to let it cook and soften up, but not too soft. You just want it al dente. And this process should be fairly quick if you soaked your noodles. And just allow the hot water to cook the bean thread noodles for at least a minute or so. Should be fairly quick. You don't want to overcook this because if you do, once we add everything else in, they're going to break apart. And bean thread noodles are pretty fun. Um, they are used all over Southeast Asia for fillings, for noodle soups, for stir fries, for lots of things. So you guys can definitely buy and find bean thread noodles at your local Asian grocery store. Okay, so this looks like it's good. I'm going to try one. All right, so it's good. Still has a really nice chew to it. Let's go ahead and drain this. Quickly rinse it with some cold water to stop it from cooking. Go ahead and let it drain out any excess water. While this is draining, let's go ahead and cook the meat. Okay, so the vegetables are prepped, the noodles are nice and cooked and draining right now, and all the seasonings are nice and mixed. The last thing we're gonna do is basically cook the meat and the bamboo shoots and the mushrooms. So in a pot here, I have about two tablespoons of oil. I'm just gonna heat it up. Go ahead and add in some minced garlic. And some ground pork. So I'm using about a pound of ground pork today. You guys can definitely use chicken, turkey, any type of protein that you prefer. Go ahead and cook this until you don't see any more pink. Okay, so the pork is nice and cooked. At this point, I'm gonna create a center in the middle. And we're gonna add in some chili bamboo here. And this is chili bamboo in a jar. Um, it looks like this. Go ahead and just drain it really well before you add it into the stir fry. And this is what they look like. We're just using one jar of that today. Go ahead and add that in there. 
And then we're also gonna add in some straw mushrooms. This is what they look like. They are canned as well. If you guys don't like canned mushrooms, definitely use any fresh shiitake mushrooms, any other dried mushrooms that you prefer as well. But this straw mushrooms are the ones that we I grew up eating and my mom would use these for bing ta. So if you guys want, definitely use these. But if you guys don't like canned mushrooms, opt out and use other types of mushrooms that you enjoy eating. But this is very nostalgic for me, so I'm using straw mushrooms today. And then I also have some bamboo shoots here that I cut up. These are not in chili oil whatsoever. These are just a plain bamboo shoots in water. Took it out and just cut it into strips like this. So we're gonna add extra bamboo in there. Just add all that in there as well. Okay, we're gonna mix this up. So I have the heat up pretty high. I'm gonna let this sit for at least two to three minutes to allow the bamboo shoots to brown a little bit. And go ahead and add in the sauce that we mixed in earlier, all of it. Mix it. And just let it cook for about 30 seconds to a minute. The stir fry part is done. Let's go ahead and let this cool before we add it to the noodles. All right, so the very last thing we wanna do is just mix everything together in this big bowl. Go ahead and drop in the noodles. And the stir fry. Stir fry is still a little bit warm, but that's totally fine. At this point, we're just gonna mix. So I have some gloves on, and I'm gonna be mixing it with my hands. And we're just gonna mix until the noodles are nice and coated with the stir fry and the seasoning. And one of the reasons why I'm not stir frying the noodles is because there's a tendency to overcook the noodles. Uh, the noodles may become too sticky to eat and they break apart a little bit too much when it's stir fried. In this way, you guys will notice that a lot of the noodles aren't breaking apart or overcooked or sticky. So that's the good thing about not having to stir fry the noodles. Okay, so that's nice and coated. It's best to let this sit for at least five minutes so that the noodles can be able to soak all of that seasoning. And then we'll come back and add in the vegetables. Okay, so it's been a good five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and just do another mix of this. So if you guys notice that the noodles become a little bit too dry, go ahead and add a couple tablespoons of vegetable oil in there to kind of loosen up the noodles. So the noodles are nice and coated. At this point, you guys can go ahead and taste the noodles to see if the seasoning is right to your palate. Um, so at this point, let's go ahead and add in the vegetables. So I'm using some shredded carrots here. Typically and normally, most family members in the Hmong culture would stir fry the carrots, but I grew up eating it raw. So if you guys want, you can definitely cook the carrots if you prefer. So I'm gonna add it raw in here, and that's just how I grew up eating it. So it's really up to you guys. And this is about one whole carrot that I shred. And then let's talk about herbs. So I have quite a lot of herbs today. I'm using some mint, some dill, some green onions, and some fresh cilantro. All of these were from my garden. I'm doing a combination of everything today just because it is herb season and it goes super, super well with this noodle dish. So you guys can choose and pick your favorite herbs. These four types of herbs are my favorite herbs to use, particularly for this dish. So I'm using equal parts of each, but I highly recommend mint and dill. It goes really, really well. And that's about it for our vegetables. Let's go ahead and just mix this up again. Now, if you guys wanna cut the noodles a little bit shorter, feel free to. I do wanna note that if you let the noodles sit for at least one or two more hours, it will taste a lot more flavorful because it's spending time to soak up all of that delicious seasoning that we made earlier. All right, so this is pretty much it. You guys can go ahead and give this a try, add other stuff that you guys like, but it's super, super simple. Let's go ahead and serve this on a plate and enjoy it as it is.
just out of curiosity to my mom fam, uh, do you guys know why this dish is called Bing Kyo? While having dinner with my family, my brother predicted that this dish is probably called Bing Kyo uh, because it was created by two brothers. One was named Bing and the other one was named Kyo. So they came together and named this dish Bing Kyo. <laughs> but that's just a, a theory that we had. But if you guys know why this dish is called Bing Kyo, do let me know because I'm curious. I asked my grandparents and parents and they didn't really know either. But uh, if you guys have any theories of why this dish is called Bing Kyo, uh, let me know.